Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my pixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. Today we're going to show those enemies who's the boss. We can't go on and just let them think they own the place. So let's wipe that smirk off their face and start destroying those enemies with our fireballs. Now if you're ready like I am, then let's go. First off, we're going to go into our elf script and code what'll happen when he gets hit with the fireball. For now, let's go with, well, when he's hit with the fireball, he'll just be completely destroyed. So for that, we'll go into our enemy script here. Enemy, enemy script. Now in this variable declaration area that we have up here, right, where we have all our constants and our other variables, we're going to make a new variable, right? This one is going to track, well, let, let's, let's type it out, var is dead equals false now I'm sure you can probably guess but this variable is just going to track whether or not the enemy is dead we're also going to make a new function so under this ready function which we're not actually using but we're just uh, it's like there for safekeeping I guess in case we decide to use it to test something but we're going to make a new function so this is going to be called function dead this is what's going to get called when uh, we want to kill the elf. So when we want to kill him off, then we're going to have to set is dead equal to true. We're going to set his velocity. To zero. Because we don't want him to keep on moving, right? he's lying down and sliding across the screen that wouldn't make any sense and then we're going to make our animated sprite play the dead animation now you might be saying we don't have a dead an animation yet and you'd be correct so let's go and make that right now we'll jump back into the animated sprite the sprite frames we'll just create him a dead animation uh, we'll set it to zero because it's just gonna it's just gonna be a one one framer here we'll just keep it simple go into our sprites enemy we'll just drop in the dead animation which is just him lying on the ground okay We'll jump out of there. Get back into our script. I think we might need to be there. We'll just do a save. I'm just hitting Control S on the keyboard if you're wondering. When I just say save and I don't actually click around. Control S is a shortcut. Right, then you have Control, Shift S, all this stuff up here. It's good if you get used to using the keyboard shortcuts. It saves you a lot of time. So. Now that we've created the animation for the elf when he dies, let's go into our physics process and make a change here. We're going to add in if is dead is equal to false. And we're going to put everything inside of that's currently inside of this physics process under the if statement. So here we only want the enemy to keep moving if they are still alive. So we put all of the movement code, all of this, under the if statement that checks if the enemy is alive or dead. Now let's jump into our fireball script. We already have the fireball queue free itself when it hits anything. In addition to this behavior, now we want it to also destroy the enemy. But we need to do a check to make sure that the fireball has hit the enemy so that we don't try to queue free a wall or some other part of the environment. So inside of the fireball script, under the function on fireball body entered, which we have here, before we queue free it, this is what we're going to do. We'll say if enemy in body dot name body dead. 
Here, when the fireball comes into contact with something, it receives information about it and stores the information in the temporary variable body, which you'll see right here. We check to see if the string enemy exists in the body's name, and then if it does, we tell the body to run the dead function. In this instance, the body is going to be the enemy. And we created the dead function in the enemy. So when we say body.dead, that tells the enemy to run its dead function. Now we should have something worth looking at, so let's run the game and see where we're at. Okay, so we'll jump around for a little bit. Shoot some elves. Okay, all the elves go down like we want them to. Now that seems like it's pretty good, but actually you can see right here we have a problem. We have other things that we need to work on. So the first thing that we need to work on is that the elves still have collision boxes, even when they're dead. Right, this collision box is representative of when he was standing up and I'm now looking like I'm floating in the air, right? This makes absolutely no sense in this game. So we're going to need to fix that. Also, what we're going to try and do is have the elf only exist on the screen for a little bit after he dies and then disappear. With all that being said, let's see what we have to do to accomplish this. Now, because we want to get the elf to disappear after a certain amount of time has passed, we're going to need a timer of some sort. Luckily, Godot comes with built-in timers that we can use, so let's go ahead and add one to our elf. I keep referring to as keep referring to the enemy as elf because that's what he looks like, but we actually named it enemy. I need to remember. So let's go back into our enemy, or add an uh, add a timer to our enemy. So we'll click the enemy here. We'll just add. You can type timer in the search bar. And we'll just add a timer. Pretty easy. Now we'll set the parameters for the timer. We're going to set the wait time to 2. This 2 uh, means seconds. We're going to set one shot to on. Auto start is not going to be on. It's going to be off. And then we're going to have to connect a signal from this timer to our elf or our enemy. So we'll click node here and we have this timeout signal. So click timeout click connect. We're going to connect it to the kinematic body, our enemy. Click connect or always remember unless you're going to write in your own function or something like that or it exists already. You want this make function to be on Then connect. And now we have the timeout connected to our elf or our enemy. We have to fix the issue with the collision box still being there even after the enemy has died. So we'll fix that here, if I can find it, under the dead. So after we play the dead animation, we also don't want his hitbox to exist anymore or to get in our way. So for, th for that, we're going to say collision shape 2D dot disabled equals true also because we don't have our timer started yet we need to start it so to do that we'll say timer dot start pretty easy then we'll have to go down into the function for the signal that we connected and on timeout now we want to queue free so if you remember we set the timeout to two after those two seconds have passed then the enemy should queue free itself with this I believe we have what we're going for so let's run our game and take a look So we'll shoot some of our elves here. 
They go down, they lie there for a little while, and then after two seconds have passed, they disappear. Great, looks pretty good. We'll run it one more time because there's one little thing I want to point out that we probably want to fix. So, when you see the elves die, if I run next to them, they don't have a collision box, which is great. But the problem is that our player character is being drawn behind the elf. Now, this is probably not what you want. It's the main character. You want him to always be drawn in the front so that you can see him. Luckily, there's a quick and easy fix for this, so don't worry. For that, we're going to go back into our player scene. Inside of the player, or the kinematic body 2D, we're going to go down and we'll see this section for Z index. Expand that, and we're going to set the Z index to 1. Now, even though we're dealing with a 2D game, you can think of the Z index like a Z axis. What it does is it controls the depth of the things that we draw to the screen. By default, everything gets drawn with a Z axis of 0. If two sprites are drawn in the same place with the same Z index, the sprite that is drawn last is drawn on top. Just like if you were drawing with crayons on paper. If you draw with white and then you draw with black, yes, the crayons mix, but in general, the black sits on top of the white. In this case, the elf was drawn after the player, so the player was appearing behind the elf. We set the Z index to 1 on the player to force it to be drawn above the elf. The higher the Z index, the further towards the top, quote unquote top, the sprite is drawn. Now let's run our game and make sure that our change was effective. And we'll shoot these guys, and then... Oh, I was too late. We'll shoot them. Okay. Awesome. Just like we wanted. Now the player is drawn on top of the elf. The player is the focus of our game, so we couldn't just have him be drawn underneath a pile of destroyed elves. After all, if you look closely, I think you've noticed, he is a king. Today we gave those elves a reason to fear our fireballs. We also learned about using timers. The timers that Godot provides are really convenient. From the past, I'm used to having to write code for my own timers. Now, while there may still be instances where you would want to code your own custom timer, Godot gives you the choice and having that choice is always nice. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you liked today's video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I always enjoy hearing about how your project is going, so please let me know in the comments or just drop by and say hi. As always, the project folder for today's episode and all other episodes in this series will be available for download on my Patreon page. You simply download the zip file, extract the project folder, and you'll have exactly what I've shown in this video. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. And with that, we'll call it a day. So thanks again to everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Take it easy.